Hi, in this episode we will create the hardware for our solar powered weather station measuring temperature, humidity, air pressure and light. The weather station will be placed outdoors and use Wi-Fi to publish the sensor readings to our MQTT broker. Node Red will process the data and display conveniently on our devices. I decided to stick to the Wemos microcontroller since it's really cheap and provides great amount of accessories. These are the components we need in addition to the microcontroller. A BMP180 shield mainly for air pressure and precise temperature, a DHT22 shield for humidity. For light measurement we need a photoresistor and a 3.3 kilo ohms resistor. As power buffer we take an 18650 lithium iron phosphate battery and a battery case. An LM317 voltage regulator, a 3.3k ohms resistor, a 10k ohms potentiometer and a Schottky diode to regulate the solar power. We need also some connectors of your choice for the convenience, some 5 volt solar cells, a PVC pipe with a cap as case and a brick. As always you will find the link in the description to the project page containing some details, the code, the 3D files, the flows and links to some parts. Let's start. It's sufficient to stack all the shields together, at least as a first test. If the ESP runs permanently it's heating up so it's rather recommended to stack the shields side by side to get a precise temperature reading. The BMP180 is very battery friendly. It consumes less than a microamp while it's not used. Not much more to do there. Initially I started with the more common DHT11 shield. But looking at the specs I found that the minimum supply voltage should be 4 volts. But it's powered from the 3.3 volt rail on the shield. This could explain the discrepancy in sensor readings I got in the past. Testing the power consumption it's also draining the battery all the time with a base current of 50 microamps. So I decided to check out the DHT22 module. It costs just a dollar more but it's higher precision works with 3.3 volts and consumes only 5 microamps on standby. The photoresistor is optional. Since the ESP8266 has only one analog input, we can either measure the brightness or the battery voltage. We could run it monitoring the battery voltage until we are sure the system is sustainable and switch to the photoresistor later if we like. The photoresistor setup is easy. The analog input takes a voltage between 0 and 1 volt. Just like in the smart washing machine video, we set up a voltage divider such that we get meaningful readings. 3.3 kilo ohms works for me. The resistor is connected between ground and the analog input, and the photoresistor is connected between VCC and the analog input. Let's take a look at our power consumption. We like to balance between the frequency of the sensor updates and the size of the batteries and the solar panel. While running the setup consumes around 75 milliamps. The Wi-Fi is quite power hungry and updating the values each second is an overkill since the weather doesn't change so often. A good possibility to save some power is to use the deep sleep capabilities of the ESP. It consists of a real time clock which can wake it up again. While in deep sleep we can disable the Wi-Fi. With only the real time clock running we still consume around 280 microamps. To use the deep sleep without the real time clock, we would need some kind of external setup that triggers the reset to wake the ESP up again. Just like we did in the smoke detector tutorial. The real time clock is not hardwired to the reset, so we need to add a connection between pin D0, which is GPIO16 and the reset pin. Now to the power supply. The lithium iron phosphate battery is a good choice since its nominal voltage is close to 3.3 volts and we like to connect it directly to the 3.3 volt rail. Any power regulation in between means a power loss. Lithium iron phosphate are also very robust, which is good since we also like to use it in a harsh environment. The solar cells I have here are rated to 5 volts. I have tested what currents we get outside during October in Central Europe at different weathers. Changing the load we can see what current to expect at what voltage. 2 o'clock direct sun, around 50 milliamps. Just after sunset, around 450 microamps. Overcast and rain, around 5 milliamps. 
While monitoring the power consumption, the device needs around 7.5 seconds to start up, connect the Wi-Fi and to publish the sensor values. This consumes around 75 milliamps. While it's sleeping, it consumes 280 microamps. Let's say we want to let it publish every minute. This will consume 8.6 milliamps on average. This is also the current we need to harvest from the sun. Let's assume the battery has an actual capacity of 1000 milliamps. Let's check how long it can last when we get no sun at all. 5 days. But do we really need an update every minute? I guess every 5 minutes could also be sufficient. Average consumption will be 2.1 milliamps. Much better. Let's assume we get the worst case. 8 hours of rainy weather every day. This will result in an average of 1.6 milliamps per cell. I decided to use two cells in parallel. Setting the update rate to 5 minutes will be on the safe side this way. Now we need to regulate the input power. I tried a few things. The only thing working at few milliamps input was the LM317. We can regulate down the solar cell voltage to the charging voltage of around 3.6 volts of the battery. I'm not sure if it's okay to top off the battery all the time. If you are more experienced, post it in the comments. But I will give it a try and share my experience. There still is a slight problem of backward current to the regulator if there is no input power. This can be solved using a diode. But diodes have a voltage drop depending on the current. The higher the current, the higher the drop. So there is a trade-off between fully charging or risking an overcharge at low currents. I picked a Schottky diode with a small forward voltage to keep the variation low and adjust it to 3.6 volts at minimal load on the microcontroller. This is the charging circuit. 3.3k ohms between adjust and the output pin, potentiometer between adjust and ground and the diode at the output. Quite simple. Let's put everything together. I decided to separate the sensors from the microcontroller. For the BMP we need to wire D1, D2, 3.3 volts and ground. The DHT is usually connected to D4, but this is also the LED pin, so I connect it to D5 to not waste power on the LED. Then we also need 3.3 volts and ground. For the photoresistor we wrap the voltage divider in heat shrink and give it a longer wire to mount it outside on the compartment. As a rainproof case we can simply use a PVC pipe from the hardware store. Just jam everything in. Or take the inset I designed and 3D print it. The mesh will provide enough air to measure the temperature and humidity correctly but will prevent birds from creating a nest here. These walls will protect the other parts from corrosion a bit more. We could also cover everything in hot glue except for the sensors. But I still might want to tweak it so I leave it as it is for now. We shorten the pipe, taper the open end and put everything in such that the cables of the photoresistor and the solar cells are leaving the pipe the open end. I also designed a socket for the solar cells, but 3D printing is not essential here. Duct tape and a stick would also do. cable ties to fix it to the brick which will prevent the winds to take it. I put the solar on my lab, mount the station in a shadowy corner and connect everything. There is not much happening in the code of the microcontroller. I've used the Arduino IDE this time with the ESP8266 board extension and some libraries. 
You can find all the details on the project page linked below. The code basically connects to Wi-Fi, connects to the MQTT broker and publishes the sensor readings. After that it turns off the Wi-Fi and goes into deep sleep. All the parameters can be set at the top of the file. Let's check if it's doing anything. It seems to work. The user interface on my phone is provided by Node-RED, which we set up last episode. The Node-RED flow receives the published values from the MQTT broker and feeds the gauges and charts. You can explore my flows. Those can also be found on the project page. That's it for this episode. If you liked it, please share and subscribe to not miss what's coming next. See you next time. Bye.